friends hello my young learners how are you all i hope you all are safe and healthy and happy at home my dear friends i'm sure you all have enjoyed are enjoying all your lessons all your sessions once again i rakhi mishra welcome you to another session of english class where we are going to read a very interesting story a biographical story of a great man of a great scientist i think you all have got your textbooks with you and without any delay let us begin the name of the story is a truly beautiful mind and it is taken from your textbook beehive my dear students whenever we utter the word genius which name comes to your mind i'm sure you might be thinking about the great scientist the great person of this world that is albert einstein my dear children if you read about him you'll get to know that he was not at all born genius if you see if you read his biography you'll find that during his childhood days even his mother his friends his colleagues they all had a very different notion about his personality but what he gave to this world he gave such concepts to this world he introduced the world with a very different definition and he brought he took the human beings very close to science he gave a new definition to time space and because of his theories i think we all recognize him to be one of the greatest scientists of the world and the moment we use the word genius his name is synonymous to genius now to tell you more about to bring you close to the life of this genius this biographical sketch has been introduced in your textbook so let us read about him a truly beautiful mind albert einstein was born on 14 march 1879 in the german city of ulm without any indication that he was destined for greatness on the contrary his mother thought albert was a freak what does freak mean a person who does not behave or talk or think like others she felt as if he was something different very unusual kind of uh, personality to her his head seemed much too large and you know it is said that albert einstein did not talk for several years and once what happened they were the family was taking supper and all of a sudden einstein spoke a few words what did he say he said the soup is hot and when his mother asked that why didn't you speak for so many days so many years then he replied saying that because up to now everything was in order so it's not that he really had any problem but he was finding he was looking for the right opportunity to speak and when it was necessary then only he thought he would speak so whatever his mother thought perhaps that was not true in this case at the age of 2 and 1/2 einstein still wasn't talking 
and it was really a matter of great concern for the family. When he finally did learn to speak, he uttered everything twice. This was another peculiarity. Einstein did not know what to do with other children and his playmates called him Brother Boring. He preferred to not to speak to them and whatever he spoke, he spoke twice. So the youngsters played by him, youngster played by himself much of the time. He especially loved mechanical toys. Looking at his newborn sister, Maja, he is said to have said, fine, but where are her wheels? That means anything moving, anything mechanical really attracted the attention of this boy. Because he wanted to really locate what is the reason of something moving and something not moving. And this was the question that he asked when his sister was born. You see the inquisitive mind of this young child. Now when he, when he was sent to school, even it is said that he didn't have a very comfortable uh, stay or time even in school. A headmaster once told his father that what Einstein chose as a profession wouldn't matter because he'll never make a success at anything. Just note here, some, somebody who has been assessed or judged or commented upon like this, he proves himself or he, is, he comes out to be a genius one day. But his headmaster once told him that whatever he takes does not matter because he is not going to get success in his life. Einstein began learning to play violin at the age of six because his mother wanted him to. He later became a gifted amateur violinist. What does it mean? Amateur violinist means played violin just for pleasure and not for a job. It was not a source of income for him, but for pleasure he used to play violin, maintaining this skill throughout his life. You can see that we are talking about uh, uh, that he started his playing violin at the age of six, but you can see in the picture, even in the later years also, he continued playing because it used to give him a lot of pleasure. But Albert Einstein was not a bad pupil. He was not a bad student. He went to high school in Munich where Einstein's family had moved when he was 15 months old and scored good marks in almost every subject. Here uh, it's shown in the picture his uh, graduation uh, mark sheet and uh, it's not very uh, clearly visible, but from here you can see that he uh, scored good marks in almost every subject. Einstein hated the school's regimentation. It is uh, there's some a very uh, interesting thing mentioned about him is that once uh, he was in his history class and he had a kind of argument with his history teacher. History teacher insisted him to learn the dates and the events, but he opposed, he disliked. He said, what is the fun of learning the dates and the events? Rather, we should look at, we should know more about the cause of that event, cause of those wars, rather than knowing what, what, when was it. So the reason, justification, always was something that he wanted. He never just accepted the things because they were told. He wanted a logical reason for that. And that is the reason he loved mathematics. He loved physics because he always wanted to or he could get the reason of doing, finding out some and uh, some so solution of a problem. And even he gave the solutions. Uh, very quickly and he was in a very uh, very good terms with his mathematics teacher and 
physics teacher he was he was in a very uh, he was appreciated a lot by his physics uh, uh, by his mathematics teacher and often clashed with his teachers other teachers who who did not uh, teach him mathematics and science mathematics and science they they were not very happy with him because he always asked for the logic why is it so at the age of 15 einstein felt so stifled stifled means he felt so suffocated that they that he left the school for good the previous year albert's parents had moved to milan and left their son with relatives after prolonged discussion einstein got his wish to continue his education in german speaking switzerland in a city which was more liberal that means it was not that restrictive than munich the capital and the largest city of german state in bavaria einstein was highly gifted in mathematics and interested in physics and after finishing school he decided to study at the university of zurich but science wasn't the only thing that appealed to the dashing young man with a walrus mustache you can see that in the picture also you can uh, see that he was busy he's busy reading he's enjoying his reading time he was fond of reading but it is not only mathematics and physics that had attracted or that had interested him rather he was uh, very much interested in other types of reading he also felt a special interest in a fellow student meleva merik whom he found to be a clever creature this young serb had come to switzerland because the university of zurich was one of the few in europe where women could get degrees einstein saw in her an ally that means a friend against the philistines those people who in his family and at the university with whom he was constantly at odds so he found that uh, this meleva she was she could prove herself to be a good friend and an associate of einstein and they became very good friends the couple fell in love let us survive in which they put their affection into words mixing science with tenderness wrote einstein how happy and proud i shall be when we both have brought our work on relativity to a victorious conclusion you see this is the book which is meleva marik einstein so you about both of them and th- these letters they prove that how uh, they wanted to really work together and bring certain uh, new concepts or new findings and uh, he wanted that he, they should give something new to this world in 1900 at age of 21 albert einstein was a university graduate and unemployed he worked as a teaching assistant gave private lessons and finally secured a job in 1902 as a technical expert in the patent office in bern you can see the photograph here uh, he is shown uh, doing some work in the patent office uh, in bern and what he said is that during this job he found certain very relevant uh papers he he did lot of work and he believed that this was the time this was the place where he did lot of he did lot of collection which helped him in further studies while he was supposed to be assessing other people's inventions einstein was actually developing his own ideas in secret he is said to have jokingly called his desk drawer at work the bureau of theoretical physics why is it so as i said that this was the place where he was uh, involved in lot of uh, assessing work and he came across he uh, several ideas and s- these things really helped him to study to have more and more research 
in the future. One of the famous papers of 1905 was Einstein's special theory of relativity, according to which time and distance are not absolute. That means they are not in relation to anything else. Indeed, two perfectly accurate clocks will continue, will not continue to show the same time if they come together again after a journey. If one of them has been moving very fast relative to the other, is it? It's all relativity. And here, uh, in your textbook, textbook also it is very um, interestingly given. Uh, you can just have a look there. That he says that it is all relative about time and space, and this time is relative. If you are just waiting for something to happen, time seems so long for you. But when you are sitting with a beautiful girl with you, having some good uh, discussion or having some good time, then time just flies. So here he says that time, it is all relative. How you are spending, what you are doing while spending that time, it is all relative. And here he has given an example of two clocks also. From this followed the world's most famous formula which describes the relationship between mass and energy. You all have heard about this famous equation E is equal to mc square, where E is the energy, m is the mass, c is the constant which is the speed of light in vacuum. Right? So here he is the one to, who had given this very important equation, right? Describing the relation between the mass and the energy. While Einstein's was Einstein was solving the most difficult problems in physics, his private life was unrevealing. That means it was uh, not very uh, happy, right? He was, uh, it was coming uh, to a fall. Albert had wanted to marry Meliva right after finishing his studies, but his mother was against it. She thought Meliva, who was three years older than her son, was too old for him. She was also bothered about Maleva's intelligence. She was not that intelligent. She is a book like you, his mother said. Einstein put the wedding off. Right? Though at that moment he thought not to, he dropped the idea of marrying Maleva. But finally the pair finally married in January 1903 and had two sons. But a few years later, the marriage faltered. This marriage did not work. It was not a successful marriage. Meliva, meanwhile, was losing her intellectual ambition and becoming an unhappy housewife. After years of constant fighting, the couple finally divorced in 1919. Einstein married his cousin Elsa the same year. Now, Einstein's new personal chapter coincided with his rise to world fame. Now, gradually, with the passage of time, he became very famous. In 1915, he had published his general theory of relativity, which provided a new interpretation of gravity. An eclipse of the sun in 1919 brought proof that it was accurate. Whatever Einstein was studying on, whatever theory he had talked about, theory of relativity, everything was proved accurate in 1990. Einstein had correctly calculated in advance the extent to which the light from fixed stars would be deflected. Deflected means they would be going in different directions after hitting something, after hitting the uh, any object, right? through the sun's gravitational field. And the newspapers proclaimed his work as a scientific revolution. You see, in the earlier, in the beginning of the session also, I said that he introduced world with different concept, 
related to time, different concept. He gave a new dimension. He gave a new definition to time and space. And this was also, this particular research was also a scientific revolution. That is what several papers, newspapers had declared. Einstein's received, Einstein received Nobel, Nobel Prize for Physics in 1921. He was showered with honors and invitations from all over the world and lauded by the press. He was appreciated all over the world. And here you can see that the other Nobel, Nobel laureates are also uh, standing there with Einstein for a photography session. Right. It is Einstein uh, near the observatory of Mount Wilson, which operated the largest telescope at that time. Right. So they all are standing there with Einstein. And in uh, 1921, he was he was awarded with the Nobel Prize for physics. Now, another thing, um, the other aspect here that when the Nazis came to power in Germany in 1933, Einstein emigrated to the United States. He left the country. Five years later, the discovery of nuclear fission in Berlin had American physicists in an uproar. Many of them had fled from fascism, just as Einstein had, and now they were afraid the Nazis could build and use an atomic bomb. You see, he was a scientist, no doubt about it. But he never wanted his science to be used for destructive purpose. He never thought and he never advocated the inventions, the new studies, the new research in the field of science for any destructive purpose. He was dead against that. And it was during this time when a lot of disturbance was there, he felt as if it was time for him to not to support uh, the inventions or the new discoveries or the inventions for any of the destructions, mainly for, for uh, destructing the human lives. At the urging of a colleague, Einstein wrote a letter to the American president. Franklin D. Roosevelt, on 2nd August 1939, in which he warned, it's very important here, because he, you see what, it is, he being a scientist, he always wanted that his scientific research, his scientific findings, his new inventions should help the mankind, not that it should be used for some destruction. And he had some kind of belief that whatever was being done by the Americans, perhaps it is going to destroy or it is going to uh, destroy and destruct the human lives. And so he wrote a letter to American president. A single bomb of this type, he's talking about the nuclear bombs. A single bomb of this type exploded in a port might very well destroy the whole port together with some of the surrounding territory. You see what is his tone. He's warning him. So it, in a way, he wanted to tell that such things should be discouraged. He warned them. And he never was advocating any kind of scientific uh, development for these reasons. His words did not fail to have an effect. The Americans developed the atomic bomb in a secret project of their own and dropped it on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. I think, my dear children, this is the right moment that we are reading this because it was during 6th to 9th of August 1945 when Americans had dropped atomic bombs in these two cities of Japan. And you see how the destruction took place. It was because of that scientific invention, or you can say the uh, bringing of atomic bomb to this world, which had 
brought destruction to these two cities now my dear children i will discuss up to here in this part we have already discussed we have already read paragraph 1 to 15 now we will take up some questions from your text and in the second part we will be discussing the rest of the two paragraphs along with some of the other textual questions so here we have the questions question number 1 which is based on your reading now you don't have to do anything with the understanding of that but what you need to do is you have to see each and every paragraph has a particular idea or a title or you can say a heading so you see up to 15th paragraph each and every paragraph there are some points that are highlighted so first read the headings given in the question and then locate which paragraph talks about it for example when we say einstein's equation so which paragraph talks about it if you see the question you'll find that it is paragraph number 9 which is talking about his famous equation we got to know that every paragraph was talking about uh, some particular aspect of einstein right so here what has happened is that uh, some of the points are given to you but they are all jumbled up they are all mixed so what you need to do is you have to read the comment given you have to read what is the heading for each paragraph and you have to see which paragraph talks about this so you should be ready with your textbook first one is done for you einstein's equation this is mentioned in paragraph 9 now my dear children you have to see which paragraph will be talking about einstein meets his future wife try to find out will have you need to refer to your text uh, to to the text go to the concerned paragraph next is the making of a violinist you have seen uh, you have read it also in the text that he learned right from his very early age he started learning violin because his mother wanted him to learn violin and this passion he continued throughout his life i had given you a picture also so you can just quickly refer to the text and see which one you solve it then we'll have a match with your answer with the correct answers right but first you try it on your own then meliva and einstein's mother something is mentioned about einstein's mother and meliva because einstein's mother was not in favor of meliva and einstein getting married because she felt that her intellectual does not match with this and she is not that intelligent and she, somehow she did not uh, have a very good opinion about her uh, so does it have you got have you been able to trace where is it i think it is not difficult a letter that launched the arms race yes it is mentioning about the letter you have to refer to that paragraph where the mention about the letter is given then it does desk drawer full of ideas he talks about the patent yes i think you have got it then marriage and divorce he got married and then he got divorced he got married to meleva and after a few years he got divorced so here is the answer five i think first one is paragraph 9 the second one is paragraph 7 paragraph 3 then you have paragraph 10 fifth one a letter that launched the arms race you have found in paragraph 15 then you have paragraph 8 talking about desk drawer full of ideas and paragraph 11 talks about his marriage and divorce i think all of you have got it correct now another interesting question here for you from your text 
who had these opinion about einstein we, other than einstein we also get to know about his headmaster we get to know about his friends we get to know about his teachers we get to know about his mother what they had to say about einstein so here we have three statements you have to see first you try it on your own he was boring who said this who believed that he was boring i think his friends yes so his playmates they thought that he's boring and they never were very happy with him and they used to call him brother boring right he was stupid and would never succeed in life somebody had given this statement about this child when he was a child and he was into his school he somebody had said this to his father yes it was his master who said this he was a freak i think in the very first paragraph you get to know that mother used to believe that he was freak because he was very unusual kind of person very unusual behavior right some unusual behavior we also got to know that he did not speak uh at an early age his head was very big and he preferred not to talk he started talking after two and a half right now question number 3 explain what is the what the reason for the following are first one einstein leaving the school at munich for good what do you think what was the reason why did he want to leave was he very comfortable there i think no he hated regimentation i have given you some hints you note down the hints and you frame sentence and write it right he hated regimentation and he had often clashes with the teachers because teachers had a different concept different uh, uh, belief and he had just contradictory uh, belief of his studies right he was but as I, if you remember i had mentioned that he was very happy with his science and mathematics teacher next is einstein wanting to study in switzerland rather than in munich why is it so again you have a hint here it was more liberal than munich yes it was less strict then third one einstein seeing in mileva an ally why do you think he felt that yes she could be a good companion a good partner a good friend why is it so because she was against those whom he did not like what do these tell you about einstein now whatever we said here you have to write whatever we have discussed so far about einstein you have to write about him right that what kind of things he liked what kind of people he liked and what was his belief regarding studies and why he was a good why he thought mileva was a good friend of all these things you have to just club and write about him now we have completed question number 1 2 and 3 which covers all the points which are mentioned from paragraph 1 to 15 now my dear children in the next part we will be discussing the rest two paragraphs paragraph 16 and 17 and we will be discussing some more textual questions and will be taking up some language questions also right so with this we come to the end of part 1 of this story a truly beautiful mind thank you